Hey, Chubbies, we are back, and we have a special guest with us here this evening. Unfortunately, Chad is no, is not with us here tonight. He, uh, he's he got a lot going on. Uh, he's got a, a sick father-in-law and Millie. G- get well, Millie. She's still got a broken leg. Uh, she broke her leg in four places uh, a couple weeks ago, so Chad is not with us. But uh, we've got a special guest here with us tonight. But, uh, hey, guys, you just got me, Chubby Pudge. So, hey, welcome, welcome back. We appreciate everybody tuning in. And uh, once again, and thank you to all of our sponsors. You know, we've got McDonald's of Jackson, Wellston, Oak Hill, and MacArthur. Uh, Brad and Sarah Munn, those guys have been wonderful always. They've, they've always supported the show. We've got uh, Geiger Brothers, big news over there. Go check out their Facebook page. Uh, they just had a, a huge uh, ordeal for their company. All great stuff. Uh, so congrats to those guys, but appreciate you guys over at Geiger Brothers uh, for always being on our side. We've got our, uh, you know, hey, you got me, Gillum Insurance. Hey, I'm always glad to be here and glad to be a part of the show you know so what could i say but hey if you're a business owner looking for life insurance any type of commercial insurance or home and auto hey I, i'd love to have a chance at your business give me a call 740-395-0190 and hey, one of the reasons that we were able to, to kind of lock in with this guest, and, and I call this guy the nucleus, but uh, another sponsor on our show, AP Prep, uh, Jason Prater and the, and the crew over there, another big sponsor of ours. We can't thank them enough for always, you know, pulling the strings and tying things together. And, you know, as of late, we've got a new guy on board, Mr. Ray Chapman over at Nimco Gas. So I know winter's winding down, haven't needed it a whole lot here lately, folks, but uh, make sure you give him a call at 740 740- Three. Uh, let's see. Seven four zero five nine six four four seven seven. So that's Nimco Gas. So all your propane needs. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Chubby Guys podcast. We'll be right back with you with Mr. Mike Bartram. What time is it's it? It's time for the Chubby Guys podcast. Woo! All right. Hey, Mr. Bartram of the Marshall University, assistant coach at the Marshall University, former uh, NFL pro football player, former county commissioner, uh, absolute wonderful father, husband, uh, you know, devoted man. Thank you for coming on the show. How are you this evening, sir? I'm doing great, sir. I'll, I'll make sure I, I send that check in the mail to you. I pre- appreciate all that. <laughs> It was a nice comment, but uh, it, it's an honor and a privilege and very humbling to, uh, to be on your show, so I really appreciate it. Well, you know, I, I tell you, I, I've met you a couple different times, and, and, you know, one of the things that I've I've always tried to, to talk to you about is just one, one thing that I got to, you know, we always bring up is just you have some incredible children, and, and I, I can't get over how great of a son you have with that Cody and Cody has just been absolutely tremendous over at AP Prep with with my son. Uh, you know, we don't go over there for a particular sport, just more the camaraderie with the gentleman over there, you know, keeping my son around great people. And man alive, I tell you, Cody just, he's become like family to us. That's, that's awesome. I appreciate you saying that. I suppose at the end of the day, the sports, uh, whether they play sports or band or whatever they do, aerobics or, or gymnastics or you know eventually it's it, it, that you know those sports are going to end you might go play some intramural stuff but at the end of the day you want to try to raise your kids and uh the best way we can someone give you know at least 50 or more percent probably to my wife um you know she's had to raise them by herself a little bit through the years because of my crazy schedule and crazy life and um you know i think at the end of the day when when you hear people, um, especially people like yourself, that, uh, that you respect, and and these coaches and these teachers and principals, kind of brag on your kids a little bit, you know that's what it's all about. Because uh, sports will come and go, but you know who you are as a young man, a young woman, and, and especially in the world that we live today, it's uh, it's really cool to hear people you know say those things. But I think it goes back to how I was raised by my mother and father, and how you know Jennifer was raised my wife by her mother and father, and. Um, that respect and fear you don't cross it type thing you know yeah yeah uh, she, her, her father's a lot like mine and um you know you try to you know try to instill all those values in, in your kids and that was instilled in you so just trying to pay it forward well you know leading into the show with with that you know you know chad and i you know i know sorry chad couldn't be here man he i, I tell you he chad is our football guy you know chad you know i told you he had a full ride to marshall university he's a he's a football staple in the area and, you know, one thing that he and I are just so big on is, you know, um, 
you know, sports life balance, you know, or dad life balance type of deal, you know, or dad sports balance, however you want to call it. And, and just, you know, trying to, you know, make sure that we're doing the right things, you know, not so much the winning and the losing, you know, you know, as well as we do, but that's a huge part of it. But, you know, just make sure that we're leading them in the right direction. And, and that's why we wanted to bring you, you know, that's why we were so excited about talking to you, you know, obviously with the great kids and everything, but, you know, obviously last week, you know, and, and, you know, hopefully we can get you on here again and and just kind of keep this thing going, you know, a couple times a year if you'd like, but, but last week you had the Super Bowl and, and, you know, you've been there three times, you know, and one thing that I was really excited to ask you, you know, coming from from southern ohio like you did and you know now there's been two of you okay and you know the first time that you went to a super bowl out you know not the not the second or the third but i mean man the first time you came out of that tunnel i mean you know what went through your mind coming out of southern ohio I mean, how old were you? Where was your life at? I mean, how hard had you worked? I mean, when you saw the lights, the crowd, I mean, just tell me what went through your mind. Well, um, first of all, I, I, I apologize, but I, I was only there twice. I, I made okay. it in 96, I think it was, 95, 96, when I was with New England. And then I was there in 04, 05, I believe, 04 season, 05, maybe Super Bowl. And that was when I was with Philly. So, um, both times are, you know, it, it's, um, number one, it's just an honor and a privilege, you know, just to be able to, you know, play in the NFL and have an opportunity to, to play in the NFL. Um, but the, the excitement of, of going out to say, hey, I'm fortunate enough here to, to you know, play in the Super Bowl. And I was fortunate enough uh, back then to uh, play with my, my brother, and that was Troy Brown. And uh, Troy and I came out of Marshall together. I went to the Chiefs as a free agent. I believe he was a fifth, sixth, seventh round pick by the Patriots. So um, he was up there when when I when I got up there from, after leaving uh, Kansas City, went to Green Bay for a year, then I got traded to uh, New England in that year. So we actually played Green Bay in the Super Bowl down in New Orleans. And the thing that sticks out to me more probably than that Super Bowl than any Super Bowl because I grew up uh, kind of a country like listening to country music. Yeah, um, yeah. But I listened a little bit of like ACDC and some of that stuff. Not a lot because I wasn't like a heavy, heavy metal guy or anything. But I did listen to a little bit of ZZ Top. Well, ZZ Top was there. They were on their Harleys or whatever they were on that night. And it's in the Superdome in New Orleans. And it was one of the most amazing experiences that you could ever believe coming out. Like you said, out of the tunnel, and there's ZZ Top out there. And they're, you know, it was so loud and just, uh, and, and I think the buildup is something that I've heard guys other than myself say, like the buildup to the Super Bowl takes like five months, six months. It feels like, you know, those two weeks that uh, you just won the championship game. So you come off that emotion and then it's like, okay. Let's go. And then it gets to Monday and you're like, okay, you got to do all this stuff, to get ready for the Super Bowl. Does it get travel. exhausting? Like, does it? Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like that a little bit, but it just takes forever. And then the next week, you know, the Sunday is usually when you fly out to the venue. So, you know, we flew to New Orleans. So you, so go, right, not, out. not to interrupt you, but so you're saying, so the first week, so let's say, you know, you know, playoff brackets end and then you, you take a two week break. Yes, yes. And really, you, you practice at your facility for that week is how we did it. Now, I think from what uh, talking to you know a couple of buddies and also Coach Reed there last week, they still fly out on Sunday. So they'll fly out on Sunday to like they flew to Arizona. We flew to New Orleans and then yeah. the other time we played in Jacksonville. So um, that week is a little faster, but it still takes it, it just takes forever. What and are you doing that week? Game, uh, okay, so the the first week is a lot of prep stuff. You know, you're putting in your game plan, and um, as far as the the football X's and O's pizza piece of it, but you're you're still meeting and you're doing all those things. But you got to take care of all the logistics for your parents and your your outlaws, in laws, you know, kids if you have kids, and you know, just make sure they have hotels. And you know, the NFL does a great job of that. But you still kind of have to, you know, which I was so fortunate. My wife took care of a lot of that stuff for us, and. Uh, so we're very blessed there. Um, and then, then the next week, you're just you're, you you get there. Now Parcells did a little different when we we flew down to New Orleans on Sunday. He had no curfew, and we couldn't believe it. Like I, you know, 
flight. That was my first year with them. And we had no curfew, like mm, Sunday night, Monday night. And then Tuesdays, like the team picture, you loaded up on Tuesday after the team picture and practice. And he took us outside of New Orleans, like 30 minutes just to get us. So he let us stay there, be on Bourbon Street, do all the stuff, which I, I was hanging out more with the Green Bay guys and I was the yeah. New England guys you know, because I just came from that team and still my buddies were over there and everything. But uh, it, it was great. Then then on uh, Tuesday, we, 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 we kind of left. Now, when I was with uh, um, Philly in 2004 or five in Jacksonville, we stayed at the same hotel the whole time, which was, was like Sawgrass, I think it is, like a Marriott or something. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. It's on that golf course down there. Um, but we stayed there for the whole entire week. Um, but it's just a lot. I mean, there's a lot goes into it, the emotions back and forth and trying to get locked in and in your meetings. And, but there's just a lot of distractions, but Co- coach Barcells did a great job and coach Reed did a great job, man. Just, you know, locking us in and made sure that we were locked in for meetings and practice. And, and then, you know, you can have some downtime with your family and go to dinner or whatever in the evenings. And, um, but then on, you know, Friday night, man, it's, it's, it's on. So it's, it's, your curfews at 10 o'clock and Saturday's just like a regular Saturday mock game. And then that afternoon you have a little bit of a downtime, just like you would on the road. Or if you're at home, you know, flying away or staying at home, you go to the hotel the night before a game. And um, then Sunday's a game. And it's like, you can't wait till six o'clock, six thirty, whatever time the game was back then. I think it was six thirty the other night when I watched it. And, and the game flies by even that long halftime, it's amazing how, in my mind, and that's what other guys have played in, in Super Bowls have said, you know, the game is like five minutes long. It seems like it's forever. Yeah. But once that whistle blows and you kick kick the ball off or you return that kick, it's like, boom, the game is just so fast. Uh, but it, it was, you know, I cherish it. I, I'm very humbled by it. And I uh, want an opportunity for, you know, not only myself, but, through the years, my my mother and father, my father just passed away this past year. Um, it's okay. God is great. He's in a he's in a better place than us. So, uh, but I mean, it was like really cool for them to come watch you play. And my my mother and father probably saw me play five times in thirteen years because they're, they're they're that's fine because their country they had their satellite dish where they could have the NFL games or whatever ticket or whatever they called it back then and. Uh, but the experience of, of other people, my buddy Phil Ratliff, who passed away that I played with here, um, he made do a few games and a lot of other buddies and family members through the years when I play in Cincinnati or Cleveland or Indianapolis or Baltimore, wherever, you know, like they would come to some games. That's what life's all about. You know, it's not about you. It's about it's about all the, all your friends and family. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure that had to have been just a, just a I mean, you know, you were what in the league, 13 years, something like that? Uh, yes, sir. So, so, I mean, you know, so over that time period, I mean, just think of all the, the places. I mean, the, I don't know. How, how much would you have got to see, though, over in the country, you know, throughout the years? I mean, whenever whenever you guys go into, I mean, I really can't say that I've ever really talked to an NFL player that, you know, I mean, how much do you guys get to see an area whenever you go in? And, you know, if, you, if you're flying into, you know, you know, Minnesota to play the Vikings, I mean, how much do you get to go see Minnesota? Actually, um, if it's uh, now how how we did it in Kansas City was a little different. Um, if you go to the West Coast in Kansas City, you would leave on Friday, so you'd have a Saturday walk through. Then you'd have some time to do some things. And, um, so I'm thinking back like through the years. If you're on the East Coast to the West Coast, that's rough. So um, like say if we're we play in San Fran and we're in Philly. Uh, we definitely fly out on Friday, have an early morning walk through, and then you get on a plane, fly, you know, it's a good six hour, seven hour flight direct, uh, which is, you know, it's all chartered, so, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. So then we just go straight there, and then you, you have a little thing where you got stretch and stride and do stuff like that because you've been on the plane forever on Friday, then have a dinner, have some meetings, and, and then you're pretty much done until Saturday morning. Saturday morning, same thing. Get up, have breakfast, stretch and stride meetings. Then you go straight to walk through, usually at the stadium or a high school stadium or a college stadium, whatever. Um, if you can't get into that stadium, the NFL stadium. Um, and we've even done walkthroughs at the hotels before. And then sa- Saturday afternoon, uh, which was pretty cool. There was one year we played in Arizona when I was in Philly. And um, Chad Lewis, he and I are still like brothers. He's the associate AD for BYU. He's from BYU. And um, 
so he and his wife are still out there. Uh, they have like six, seven kids. Just an awesome family. Well, Danny Ainge, I don't know if you remember oh, that yeah, name. Yeah. He yeah. The That's one. Yeah. Um, uh, Steve Young, he's, he's, he's a guy from out there. That, uh, that, that they had a box at the um, Arizona Diamondbacks. Yeah. So Arizona was playing, I think it was a Yankees, and don't quote me on that, in the, in the World Series. And we were out there on Friday because we played Sunday, but we always went out on Friday. So like I was telling you earlier, anything like more than probably a certain amount of miles, you go in on Friday instead of Saturday. Because yeah. most of the time you go in Saturday, you get in at, say, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you get to the hotel, you can go to dinner, then you got meetings from 6.30 to 9, 9.30, nights out at 10, 10.30, 11, whatever its curfew was. But this time we had an opportunity, and so Chad got us tickets to go to the World Series, which we only got to watch four or five innings, but how cool was that? I'd never been to a World Series in my life. Oh, man. And here we are up in this box, and Arizona's playing, and Randy Johnson, the big 6'10 guy, oh, yeah. it looked like his arm, looked like when he finished, his arm was like by the catcher. You know, he was so big and tall, and uh, but they played, and I can't remember who won. But we got it. We only got to watch four or five innings because we had meetings like five, six o'clock, whatever it was. Uh, but it was really cool. So, you know, you get an opportunity to go out and see the see the venue. Now, Super Bowls, you, you have the whole week. So that's kind of cool that you get to see, you know, the area. Because New Orleans, I'd never – I think I might have played down there once, maybe before I went down there for the Super Bowl. And uh, it was really, really cool because I'd never been down to New Orleans for in Jacksonville the same way. Man, I mean, so so you know to kind of circle back around, you know, so we, you know, I don't want to take up all your time, <laughs> uh, but but uh, okay, so you know, coming out of Megs, I mean, you're you know, Southern Ohio in general, but I mean, you know, you, you get to the stage and you you see all, you see all this, I mean, and then you know, so what does that you know, how did that put your football career into perspective? I mean, you know, because I mean, there's nobody that can contest you know, what you were able to do with, with that, um, you, you know, I mean, I don't mean it like that, but I'm saying, I mean, you took it to the highest level and I mean, you know, how, how early in your career were you able to go? I mean, you know, was it like, did you have a hard time getting excited about it? Like when you, like after that, or, I mean, what did it just do to your whole football? Just, just headspace. I would say um, coming out, um, you know, coming out of Meigs County, um, coming from Meigs High School, um, the, the thing that my father, you know, he, he, he never played football. His, you know, his mom and dad wouldn't let him. So grandma and grandpa wouldn't let him. But he was able to play a little basketball in high school, and he went right into uh, construction and, and worked as a laborer over at High University and helped out in the complication center. And, and it just decided so my he grandpa. was going to go out on it. Yeah. I'm sorry. So my grandpa, he was bricklayer. That's awesome. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So they were probably there together. And um, so, so, so dad, he decided he was going to do his own thing. And um, he, he built homes, he remodeled homes, he put roofs on. Um, he never advertised. He didn't do it because he didn't feel like it. He just, he wanted to make sure that his word uh, meant something. His loyalty meant something. You know, I was a guy that definitely didn't know I was playing sports, baseball, basketball, football. I had an older brother, older sister. My brother, when he got out of school, helped him. So I was the one carrying the shingles up, shingles up on the roof. Yeah. And, and I didn't know how I, lay, I could lay some shingles here and there. I could change oil in the car and all that. But my brother and my dad, they could do anything. They, yeah. they just they were handy as handy can be. So he taught me a lot about life and about, you know, respecting people and, and, and giving it your best at whatever it is you're doing. And um, so I just felt like, you know, in high school, I had to have somebody to look up to, and it was Mike Chancy. You know, Mike Chancy was two years ahead of me, and, and I was, you know, kind of like um, freshman when he was a junior. So he, you know, then he was, a, he was a senior when I was a sophomore. I played a little bit of varsity, like defense, and a little bit of slot receiver or whatever. Um, but he went to Ohio State, so he – he he was the he was my role model, you know. He went to Ohio State. Bob Ashley is another one. Bob Bob was probably about six seven years older than me, but I didn't know Bob well. But I knew that I when I went to games, I was a ball boy on the sideline, you know, the water boy and all that stuff. Because Coach Chancy would work in the sum, summers. Our head coach he would work in the summers with my father just to make some extra money. So I knew Coach Chancy. I respected Coach Chancy just like a father. Well, Bob Ashley was about seven years older than me, so I was in fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade when he was in high school. So I was a water boy. So I let, he went to University of Utah. 
So Bob a little bit, but Mike even more because I was more relating to him because I was right there playing with him. So I'm like, hey, maybe I might have an opportunity to do this. And and Bob Ashley's father was our coach our senior year because Charles Chancey decided that he was going to just still teach, but he wanted to go watch Mike play at Ohio State. Totally understandable. And Bob Ashley's father that played at Marshall, Charles Chancey played at Marshall, is why I came to Marshall University because I had some other – offers and some other visits at some schools and I just love Marshall and um, they gave me an opportunity to come here and I came here as a quarterback got moved to tight end the first day and didn't understand but God had his reasons and coach Chomp had his reasons and and uh, so then I played tight end for a few years and I was fortunate enough to go to the Chiefs as a free agent so my headspace was this at the end of the day it's that Tim McGraw song right humble and kind I just heard that today. What a, what a coincidence. I just heard that today. <laughs> yes, sir. And so it's like, at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you treat people how you want to be treated. Whether you're in insurance business, whether you're a coach, whether you're a janitor, whether you're a president of the United States, um, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, that's what my mom, my dad, and definitely those coaches. Um, and I had to have some role models that, that, that inspired me to say, hey, maybe I can do this, the Bob Ashley's, the Mike Chanty's, because we're from a small town. Like, not very many people made it to play college football, let alone get fortunate enough and blessed enough to have an opportunity to play in the NFL. So when I took all that with me, so I had a lot of adversity. You know, I blew my knee out in college, to my ACL, PCL, LCL, almost, almost lost my leg from the knee down. Terrible terrible accident my best buddy went low on me in the spring game and and you know, he's still my best buddy to this day but I wouldn't blame him either I was 245 50 pounds I'd go low on me too and so my foot caught and and tore everything in there and they told me I wouldn't play football and yeah and I was, go- I I was going to ask you what were your biggest hurdles you know I mean you know yeah. I'm in I'm in business and I mean you know that it's a business to you at the NFL level and yes, and you know what were some of the biggest things that I mean you looked at I mean surely I mean throughout the years I mean every year I would I would assume you you saw hurdles I mean it's not like you just get there and they're like oh Mike guess what you get to stay I mean yeah. I mean how, yeah, yeah. how did that go earn, yes sir you got to earn your spot every year so I think the high school deal knowing that uh, back in high school right you played freshman ball you played JV ball then if you're fortunate enough and you're good enough, you might play varsity. You might not. And yeah. so to earn that and see how Mike Chancey did it, how Bob Ashley did it, how Coach Chancey coaches, how Coach Ashley coaches, how our middle school coaches. Then I go to college and I'm a quarterback. They moved me the first day and I called my dad and said, hey, you know, like they moved me. Like they lied to me. So they keep me a quarterback. He said, well, the only way you're getting home is thumbing. So I went about the thumb up route two to seven to home. <laughs> so I stayed here. So I pretty much I blew my knee out, you know. So there's a there's a really, really good paper, and I don't have it in front of me right now, but it's called called attitude and the attitude paper says this the gist of it is this it's 10 percent what happens in your life and it's 90 percent of how you deal with that 10 percent that's what life's about it's not the other way it's not 90 percent 10 percent it's 10 percent what happens whether you get an ar test or i make it in the nfl or whatever it's 90 percent of how you deal with that what what just happened are you humbled by it or did you learn something by it that type of thing. So I could be on the phone all night with you because I shattered my radius twice. Uh, you know, I blew my knee out in college. Uh, my first game in the NFL is number 93. They spelled my name B-A-R-T-R-O-M. We played in Milwaukee. Uh, I was with the Kansas City Chiefs back then. They used to have the Cheese League. So the Saints, yeah. the Chiefs, the Packers, the Vikings. There was like another team. Like five or six teams were up there in the Wisconsin, Minnesota area. And we would scrimmage each other, and then we would play in a preseason game. So we played our first preseason game in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We we're both on the same. So I'm there with Brett Favre. I'm there with you know Joe Montana's our quarterback. I'm I'm in awe. I had a hundred people drive up to the game, and I was number ninety three, and they spelled my name B A R T R O M on my jersey. And I don't. I'll never. And that's okay. It's okay because you were there. What happened, your life? Amen. And and I'm saying, you know what? This motivates me. When I blew my knee out, the doctor said I would never play football again. So I still, to this day, Dr. Haig, he told me that, and that's okay. 
God bless him. I'm glad he told me that because it motivates me to this day to get up and get my elliptical workout in and do an extra three Father, Son, Holy Spirit for Dr. Haig. Do it for the Kansas City Chiefs who spelt my name wrong. You know, just having that motivation in your life. And, and I don't mean it negative towards them. I'm glad they tell because they were telling me the truth. They're like, hey, you're a free agent. You're number 93. You can't even go out for a pass anyway. You're not going to make this team. That's okay. Go ahead and keep saying that. You know, so yeah. you have those things that happen in your life. Um, I shattered my radius when I was in Green Bay. The next year, I blow my ankle out. I get traded for a box of pre wrapped to New England Patriots. Two years later, I shatter my radius again, so I'm on IR. Then I get fortunate enough to get fired by Bill Belichick, and guess what? My loyalties to Andy Reid. Andy Reid, we played him in 1999, and with Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll gets fired. I get fired by Belichick, and next thing you know, Andy told me when we played him that year, gave him a call, something happened. So I called him. I said, hey, coach, I just got fired. He's like, give me about half hour and he did he called back he said i got six tight ends you're number seven come here and make this team i said yes sir so i flew to philadelphia made the team and played seven more years so you know god is great it, it, it's just it's just how you deal with things and it's your outlet you're positive we have a her brother's bible study and we talk to our guys all the time we have 30 40 guys come our bible study every week and we just talked about it yesterday a Bible study and, and, and Eli Neal, which is our starting middle backer, has led our Bible study probably three to four times in the last two years. He, he talked about talking to the guys about when we're going through this fourth quarter stuff, this really, really hard stuff that we're doing, these offseason workouts about being where your feet are, about always having God in your, on your side. I'll be on your side all day long, but do you give everything up to him? He'll take care of it. He takes care of it for you. Yeah. You might not think so because you're trying to be human it's okay it's okay but then when you look around and you see brothers have your back and then god's in the mix i mean if he is for us who shall be against us and that's exactly what eli said yesterday in bible study so he helped the guy get through the fourth quarter which is what coach um huff he calls it fourth quarter because that's what coach Saban calls it in alabama so he brought it to marshall and it's tough i mean it's 45 minutes to an hour of just grueling like spending, like you're spent, like you have like your sweat from head to toe and you can, but, but you know what, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, right? It's yeah. all about giving it up for each other, for your team, not, you know, for yourself maybe, but I think there's a lot to be said about team sports, especially football. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, so what, what's, what's been your take as far as like the way that the NFL is, is going with the, um, how do I want to say this? Um, you know, with like you're going back to these injuries, and I mean, you know, what's your thoughts on just the the way that the game is being played now compared? Because I mean, man, you went through. You were probably I, I don't know. There's lots of guys that would, that would challenge this left and right, but I mean, you know, today's game. I mean, you know, you really need to have your body and your your mental space. I mean, with social media, I mean, just everything needs to be very. You know, you, you got to be tuned in. You know, yes, I mean, so how, how do you feel about the NFL today? I mean, compared to back well, in the day. I, I do. I do, man. Like, uh, I don't know if you followed like long snappers and short snappers back in the day, but back in the day, they, they could, could hit you. 350, 350 <laughs> pound nose guard. I mean, my head has been between my legs and like I've been rolled back, like my back, my lower back to this day or whatever. But, but I'm happy. I'm happy they're trying to protect the guys. You know, that's great. It's just hard to protect. I mean, the, the television and even on the sidelines. You know, I coached in Philly in 2019 and 20. So, I, you know, I'd quit. You know, so they retired. You say quit, but retired right in 2007. So how many years is that? Like 12, 13 years. So I haven't been, I haven't been around it 11, 12 years. I've seen it maybe from, you know, watching it from a distance. I think we've gone to a couple Eagles games, uh, went to a couple Chiefs games when they played Cleveland, was out in Kansas City, seen our godson out there, went to a game. And it doesn't give it any justice until you're out on that field. You just don't realize how big, fast, quick, uh, close of these, these young men and men and older men, 30s and 40s that are. And it's like, you, it's so hard as an official, God bless those officials, it's so hard, it's so hard to, to, to split second to know exactly what you just saw because it happened almost so 20, fast. 30 miles. 
I mean, so fast. And so I'd love it. They're trying, you know, the kickoff where they only get one step, you know, they're one yard behind the ball. I think that's great. I think college is doing the same, you know, we're doing the same thing, maybe at five yards, you know, so I think they're really trying to protect the guys as much as they can. Well, they need to. It's a collision sport. You know, it it is what it is. These guys are running 25 mile, 22 mile, 20 mile an hour, you know, and and, And and you're catching the ball. Yeah. And it's like, it's just hard. I mean, I'll never forget Brian Dawkins hit Algie Crumpler across the middle in an NFC championship game in Philly in whatever year that was, 2004 or five. And he hit him so hard. It's almost like his body went through Algie's body as he hit him. And Algie goes flying. He kept holding the ball. God bless him. I mean, he kept holding the ball. Is he probably hitting four or five yards in the air? I mean, it was the most unbelievable hit I've ever seen in my life. And I'm thinking, like, how did he get up? You know, so yeah. and I, I, I watch it on television just like you and everybody, the whole world. It still does not justify how big, fast, quick, explosive these men are. And, um, do you think and I know the NFL want everything that they can to try to protect them. Do you think it's more explosive and, and faster now than it was when you played? Um, you know what? I believe so. Um, but, but it's, it, it, until you're out there, maybe you talk to a Tom Brady about that because he's, he played the 20 some years to yeah, know. Yeah. Um, but I feel that, um, I go back to the, to, to the thing I think I saw in Sports Illustrated sometime in the last few years. They did a study of Carl Lewis, maybe, and Jesse Owens. Uh-huh. And I might have got the names wrong. Yeah. Uh, I think I saw Bowles, this. Or whoever. Who were the fastest people yeah. were in the world back in the day, which was Jesse Owens. I know it was him. They took the cinders and his spikes, and they did a simulation of what they run on with asphalt or whatever the track is made of now. They said within inches, Jesse Owens either beat him or was right there with Usain Bolt or Carlos, whoever it was. Yeah, I think it was Carlos. Like, you know, I can't remember, but it's like, so you're thinking like maybe it is. I just know the size wise. I don't think they had 300 pounders back in the 60s, 70s. Even when I was there, I think there were some 280s, 270s. Jason Kelsey is an anomaly. You know, I mean, that, that guy, I mean, I coached up there for two years, really, you know, pretty good friends with him. He's a, he's a 275 pound guy, 265, 280. Uh, that dude is just unbelievable. What, what did you play at? I tell you, about two fifty, two fifty two. Because I, you know, that I've been around you, and I mean, I can't imagine a man of your stature coming across the middle. I mean, I'm thinking of you as a tight end, and I'm thinking, man, I mean, you're what six five? Yeah, yeah, about six four, six five, yes, sir. And I mean, I just can't. I mean, there, there's a. I mean, that you know, you get in Chad and I. We talk about the pee wee element, and you know, little kids in junior high. And I mean, you know, there you got to realize in order. I mean, if you're going to push your kids, I mean, push your kids. But you got to realize there's a certain element you just have to have to make it to the dance. <laughs> I mean, and it's size. I mean, you didn't see too many guys five five out there last Sunday. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I tell you, it's, uh, it, it was, um, you know, when you're a kid, I remember watching the Browns, and uh, this goes back to what we talked about in the beginning, which is pretty much why we're on here, right? We're, you know, we're talking about little experiences, but at the end of the day, man, we're all human. Yeah. We all tie our shoes the same way for the most part. And I remember my dad, we would watch the Cleveland Browns, you uh, know, if you remember Ozzie Newsome, yeah. and uh, I was fortunate enough to meet Ozzie a couple of times and tell him my little testimony to him on the sidelines before we played him in a preseason game when he was a GM of the, of the Ravens. And I was like, my dad would say, yeah, Michael, watch him. Watch 82 for the Browns. Watch what he does when he scores. He would just hand the ball to the official. Like class act. Yeah. yeah, amen. You know, like, and just be a class act. And, and that's one thing that my dad instilled in me to always try to be. Um, and I, I probably wasn't all the time. One time I snapped the ball back to Donovan and, got a little penalty which Andy wasn't very happy about but I was just kind of messing around I wasn't meaning to do it so I I was guilty of doing something stupid too you know just having fun it's a show uh, now isn't it 
Oh yeah, yeah. It, but it, I it mean, is, hey, uh, it's entertainment. I mean, you know, there, it, 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 it's that too. But it, 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 yeah, it, it, it does. But I mean, you know, at the end of the day, they're doing it for revenue and dollars. And and hey, I mean, my son, he's nine years old, and I took him to his first game this year. I mean, I went to my first pro games this year. And, awesome. Yeah, and he, we, we, I'd never been one. I'm 42 years old, never been to one. Ended up at three of them this year. Uh, I was, oh, that's great. Awesome. I was there for the Demar Hamlin game. Oh, God bless you. Yeah, and uh, that was that was pretty wild. I mean, you know, I mean, I've avid football experience. I guess you know, played in high school, but that's about it. And but you know, but as a football player, you know, you're sitting there and you're thinking, you know, immediately whenever I saw the the personnel, I thought, man, this this is very serious. But inside that stadium, they they didn't really give you any clue on how serious that was and you know just what a what a piece of history of football history that was i mean that will always be remembered but uh you know just that whole night that monday night football and i mean just being in that crowd and just the the entertainment aspect of it and just hey i mean you know burroughs has got since you know i'm sure you probably a little bit proud of this even though you don't have any ties to cincinnati but i mean he's really helped cincinnati hadn't he i mean it's it's been neat to watch that over there yeah, you know what? Um, so Coach Burrow came with Coach Soul, which is, as you probably know, yeah, there Frank. back in, OU. you know, what, like 20 years ago. Right? 01, 02. Yeah, so yeah. pretty much when I would come home, uh, you know, we lived in, we have our farm up home uh, in Pomeroy, and we had our place in New Jersey. So the kids would go to school in New Jersey um, half a year. Then when the season was over, we would, you know, couple of days and we'd bring them back and they were little then their first second third fourth grade whatever you know so it wasn't like big big so we would wait two or three days and get them back home and then get them in school so when i would come home i would you know if i had i think i had ankle surgery one year i had knee surgery another year you know so i would go over there and do rehab so i've really become pretty good friends with coach solich and coach alvin the hook coach there now which is awesome and then also coach burrows and so i saw joe you know when he was younger our oldest cody you were talking about was a year behind Joe, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I think he was a year behind him. And then when I coached at Megs, I actually coached against Joe a few years. And, um, you know, so it was, it was neat to see the kid. I mean, always competitive, always had that, that it factor about him. Um, and how he is and how he's grown as a, as a man, you know, mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't know Joe as well as I do coach Burrow, but coach Burrow and actually his wife, um, and Jennifer, my wife's sister, um, Jody, she was a principal at Eastern Elementary, if okay. you know, Eastern yep. Southern yep. in Mexico County, uh, for years. And she wanted to try to get a little closer to home because she, you know, she has four boys. And so, I don't know, probably maybe four or five years ago, maybe six, um, she took the job at Meg's. Well, Mrs. Burroughs was up in Athens and she took that job. She took uh, Jody's and Jody's job at Eastern. So, so there's a mix there yeah. of all the combinations of, of, of that. And I remember seeing, uh, you know, cause we were still back home at that time, seeing Mrs. Burroughs at some academic thing that our kids were involved in and like a whole county thing. And, and he, she was telling me how Joe was struggling a little bit at, and Coach Burrow was too at Ohio State. And, and I tell, we tell our college players, I tell anybody that wants to listen, anybody on this podcast that wants to listen, Joe Burroughs is the epitome of what should happen, in my opinion, with the transfer, right? With, with sticking it out, doing everything he can to be successful. We would take our football players to Ohio State football camp because the football camp Coach Myers had up there, they had probably 50 to 100 colleges there, D2, um, FCS, D3. I mean, so we wanted our kids to go up and be exposed. And what better way than Ohio State? They opened up the yeah. whole facility for 500 kids to come in there. So we would take our kids up. Well, I would see Joe in the summer. And I'd be like, hey, how you doing, buddy? He's like, ah, Coach, I said, I'm, I'm taking some, uh, some, college, some, some courses this summer. I want to graduate early. I was like, man, that's great. That's a great idea. So then I saw, like I said, I saw Mrs. Burrow at this thing. And, and she said, hey, he's taking these classes. So he graduated in, what, three and a half years, and then he goes to LSU. He did it the right way, right? He graduated. He got out of there. Um, he wasn't working out for him there. So I'm just so proud of him and everything he's done and how he represents Southeastern Ohio and, and Coach Burrow and his, and his mom. You know, like we talked earlier, man, it's, 
You know, let other people brag on your kids. Coach Burrow and Mrs. Burrow don't need to brag on him because he's a great kid because he came from an awesome parents. Can you imagine? You know, and that, and that, I mean, can you imagine if that's you? I mean, you, you were that guy back whenever you, you know, was in Southern Ohio. Can you, I mean, here, he, this guy gets a chance. I mean, he goes to the Ohio State. And I mean, hey, I'm not that guy. Okay. I rarely watch football. Okay. <laughs> but, but I mean, he gets a chance to go to the, to the Ohio State University and then decides, I mean, most guys would have just took that on the chin and then went back and ran a local bank. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, and then this guy comes in and just says, no, you know what? I think I'm better than this. And I mean, I just thought, I mean, what a great story that is. And I mean, I I think that just shows a little bit of testament to, and I I don't mean to, you know, sound like that guy. I mean, you've been all over the country, but you know, there are some great things that can come out of this region. Uh, you know, you, you type of men like you and Joe are, are a testament to that. Um, uh, you know, I mean, you know, it's it's real easy not to 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 give up and and not think highly of yourself because nobody else does. And and yeah. uh, look at look at what happens whenever you know, just like you were talking about in your in your prayer meetings. I mean, you know, you need to stay yeah. positive and you need to you need to you know kind of be all in and and you know just go at it. You know, with a good positive mindset. It's uh it's it's a really positive, really great thing, powerful thing. I mean, look at both of you yeah, been to the Super Bowl. Really, really- What's really cool about that whole deal and Coach Huff, you know, he, he said some things that I've never I've never heard before. I love learning. I love learning. I've learned from Coach Reed, I've learned from Coach Holgram, I learned from Coach Tancy, Coach Ashley, uh, Coach Barcells, Coach Harbaugh that's a head coach in Baltimore, that was our special teams coach and so I learned like I love learning. Me too. And and yeah. one thing he says and he's right, when you get up in the morning and I believe you make your bed. That's one little 30-second deal, 15-second, minute maybe at the most. Just make your bed, man. I just accomplished something. So my wife and I, since we've been together, since we were married in college, you come in, our bed is made. And it is made every day. It might not be perfect, but we make our bed. She gets up last. She makes it. I get up last, which most times her because I'm out early. But she makes our bed or I make our bed or we make it together on a Saturday or Sunday. You made your bed. You determine as soon as you put, as soon as you open your eyes, really. But once you put your feet on the ground, you can determine if you're going to have a good day or not. You control your attitude. You control your effort. You control everything. You can't control that. That that gone at the the stock market went went completely. You can't control that somebody just hit the side of your car. You can't control that. But what you can control is you. And that's one thing that sticks with me because you you when you get up in the morning. You know, I was always a big believer in making your bed and all that, but I always thought, you know what, I'm going to have a great attitude today. And you choose that or not choose that. And then I think one thing that you said earlier about our Bible study, you know, that's one thing. We say there's no elephant in the room. God is in the room. So if God's in the room, we're going to confide in him first. And whoever, whoever's in this room, the 20 of you, the 10 of you, the 30, 40 of us that's been in those rooms before, it stays in that room. And when you can open up and you can talk about things that you don't want to talk to anybody else, but you know people are praying for you, and you know most importantly God's in the mix, and next most importantly it's a positive thing, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. Just stay positive. Just have a positive outlook on life. But when you surround yourself with good, like-minded, positive people, watch out. I you bet know, you, I bet you didn't skip time. workouts and, and sleep in till 12 and do all that, did you? <laughs> You know? No, I'm gonna work out three times. I bet Whatever you still takes, do. Right? Yeah. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm still getting my workout. <laughs> I mean, that's that's one thing that we we've always noticed. Chad and I have on the show is is uh, you know hard work and dedication is and 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 good mental good mental space. You know, good 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 mindset is is probably the three things that you got to have. I mean, you know, if you're lazy. And you got to identify that. There's nothing wrong with. I mean, hey, you can be lazy right now. And there, there you said it's ten percent, ninety percent. Okay, hey, the ten percent's what's happening. You're lazy. It's ninety percent how you react to it. I try, man. You know, so hey, I won't take it. It's been forty five minutes, man. I, I, you know, can I, can I get you to commit to a show to where you come in and sit down with Chad and I? Um. Yeah. It probably. Um. We got to get through this. It might. It might have to be summertime. That's fine. I, I mean, or even another call in, man. I've really enjoyed this. 
Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I enjoyed it with you and, and definitely put me on the list. Uh, usually July, uh, which actually Cody, you're talking about Cody, he's getting married July 1st. Yep. Um, so right after that, I'll have about three weeks off before your know, coach gives us about three weeks there in July, three and a half weeks. Okay. So, um, so I'll have some time where I have, I don't think, I think we're, you know, we're not going to do vacation. Actually, we're in the process of trying to sell our farm in Meigs County. Yes, beautiful you know, place. Anybody wants to buy a farm in Meigs County. Yes. Uh, but we're actually just, we just bought a, a house in Catlettsburg. Our daughter goes to Boyd County um, High School. So she's a junior. So we're probably going to be messing with that. I don't think we'll go on vacation. So maybe there in July would be a, be Great a good time. time. Well, hey, and, and also, you know, I mean, I know I'm going to catch a lot of grief if, if we don't mention a few guys. Okay. Yes. So, you know, we, I've been here and, you know, my senior year, we get this guy down here and he's, he, he's a Marshall guy and he's going to tell you about it every time he sees you. I can see him to this day and odds, uh, nine times out of 10, he's going to put the ring in my face, but we got to give him a shout out. He's one of your old buddies, PJ Woods. <laughs> you know i mean he was he was he still i still talk to him i still love him to death he was a great coach uh he came down to jackson and coached he coached me my senior year and i, I love him to death yes, uh great yes, man so we got to give you a shout out coach woods uh, anything you yes, need sir. to tell him you want to give him a hard time I'm going, to, I'm going to give him a little bit of a hard time, but it's a good time because he's the one that, that claims he taught me how to long snap. He does. Now, he's been I saying think, this think, story for 25 I think, years. I think I think I remember. I've been hitting the head a few too, too many times. I've had a few concussions. But I think I remember him showing me, but I don't think there was much follow-through after he showed me that day. I had to I had to kind of learn myself after he showed me because he, he did. He, he could spend it pretty good. Uh, but I remember he showed me, and then there was no other help. So, uh, but he did show me, so we'll have to admit to that. But I, I don't know how much he helped me uh, and guide me to be a to be a long snapper. But but I appreciate him. I love PJ. He's a brother. He's a herd brother. Um, you know, just uh, I miss him, man. We actually just text uh, today a picture of Phil Ratliff that passed away, and Troy and himself, and Trevor Thomas. Trevor's two sons played at NC State. And they're actually have an opportunity to be drafted in the NFL, which is awesome. So Thayer and Drake Thomas are their names. So he just sent me a picture down the mountains of West Virginia where we used to go up on a rock, uh, up on High Point. And uh, so that was kind of cool. So he just said that today, and, and I, I just put a heart on there. I didn't get a chance to text anything, but PJ did. So, well, I tell you, you yeah, always – you always had a supporter with him. I, you know, I, I I didn't know you back in those days. I was just fortunate. I think I met you in uh, 2020 uh, for the first time uh, with Jason Prater. Uh, but, yes, sir. But uh, – but I, I've always heard about you, especially since since Coach Woods. And I can tell you, no matter where you were in your career, I didn't know. But I can tell you from the day one that I ever heard your name come out of Coach Woods' mouth, you had a friend and a supporter with that gentleman. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate that. And then uh, we've got another guy. We've got uh, Jason Snyder. I know we've talked about him there on the phone the other day. A uh, good friend of ours. So we got to give Snyder a big shout out. And uh, and then, like I said, we talked about him earlier, but the guy that uh, kind of brought all this together, our boy Prater. So thank you, uh, Jason Prater. So anything else you want to leave him with other than we'll see you in July? Well, well for, for Jason, um, you know, it just, um, it, you know, Jason Snyder, like what I didn't know him, like I told you on the phone yep. growing up, oh, yeah, yeah. but I look up to him that he went to the Naval Academy and did everything he did. And to this day, uh, because of Nolan Yates is how I met, I oh, met yeah, Jason, yeah. you know, what a great man, but Jason Prater. So I'll tell you the story and we'll be done uh, because it's the epitome of what he has done for so many young boys and girls and men and women throughout all of southeastern Ohio. And I don't know what Chillicothe is actually considered southeastern, but whatever Chillicothe area from Columbus all the way down, all the way into West Virginia, because I know Ty, that when we live here, he would drive all the way to Chillicothe to work out because of Coach Prater. Mm -hmm. Well, Coach Prater, the first time I ever took him to Cody, so the kid you're talking about, our son, our oldest son, to a workout on a Saturday morning, they're in the old, the old uh, warehouse. That's where they, as you well know, where yep. they used to work out. Yep. Took him in there to the workout. I sit there in a chair. There's probably five or ten kids there. He works out. Meet Coach Prater. Had met him another time through Jalen Prater. So you know Jalen. Yep, yep. So 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 and then Kurt Prater, which is Jalen's father, 
Jason's then, uh, cousin. And then, and, then, and then Tristan and Ty were best buddies, played AAU ball, so I helped coach AAU basketball way back in the day. Yeah. So we, that's how the connection is with all those guys. Well, we're leaving, and I say, Cody, what do you think? And here's what Cody Bartram said back in probably 2000, I'm guessing 12, maybe 2011, 12, 13, whatever year it was. Because uh, I think I got the next job uh, in 2012 or 11 or 12. He said, Dad, and we're driving out that little lane to get to the road to take a left to jump on 35. He said, Dad, I think for that coach back there, I'd run through a wall. That's exactly what Cody Bartram said. And from that day on, which I already had my opinion about Coach Prager because I'd met him a couple times and now I'd go to his facility, see how he treats these young men and women work ethic and the discipline and all the stuff he instills in those guys. When my son said that, it just, that said it. Like, so we did AP prep at Meg's high school the best we could. He would come at five in the morning. We would work out at five thirty with our team. He would train our team. Um, then I tried to learn as much as I could. We kept it going as much as we could at Meg's because he made that much of an influence. So all you guys, I appreciate you. Thank you for having me on. And uh, sorry about, sorry so long. Sorry. Oh no, no, long. no! I, I I didn't want to impose on your time, sir. I you know I heck I, we some we used to do these podcasts for a couple hours. You know, <laughs> you got to watch. Yeah. If Chad was here, we'd just talk all night. I'd say, "Well, go get in the recliner, Mike. We're going to go get us a drink, and <laughs> you know, we'll sit here all night." But uh, yeah. but hey, well, thank I, you, I thank you very much, and uh, I appreciate it. Tell the family we we appreciate you guys letting it have you for a couple or this time period this hour here and uh look forward to speaking to you again sir okay sounds sounds good you take care god bless you too bye-bye okay bye. all right chubbies hey that was mike barch super bowl previous player i'm pretty excited about that so hey we'll see you next week chubbies with another guest you ain't gonna believe this one either see you